Hi there, it's Mary Pong. I'm back today with another Chinese literature videos. And before I start, I want to say a massive thank you because I got a lot of support since I uploaded my last Chinese literature video and I appreciate it a lot. And I want to say that I will try my best to make these videos. In fact, I will try my best to make all my future videos. So I hope you enjoy all of them and also some of my not Chinese literature related videos because I do read a lot of other books and have opinions on them. Since in my last video, I clarified what is Chinese literature, I think it's better for me to introduce some of the Chinese writers to you. And because it's feminine, so I want to introduce three of the Chinese female authors. Initially, I planned to introduce five authors to Booktube, but during my research, I found that I have a lot to say about each one. So I limited myself for three authors and maybe try to introduce more in the future. The first writer I want to talk about today is called Xiao Hong. Among all the three writers I want to introduce to Booktube, Xiao Hong had the most tragedy life. She was born in 1911, when China was in the last year of the Empire Dynasty, Qing Dynasty. And soon after she was born, Xinhai Revolution happened, and the Republic of China was founded. And at that time, female rights are in a very weird position. On the one hand, the society encouraged females to go to school and get educated. And on the other hand, the most Chinese family are still kept the traditional value of women. So Xiao Hong managed to went to school, get education until middle school. After that, her parents arranged a marriage for her. And as an educated woman and also an activist, Xiao Hong was of course not happy about this arranged family. So it began her years of resistance to her family. And and finally, in 1931, Xiao Hong left her hometown and went to Beijing to continue her study. And at that time, the Second Sino-Japanese War happened. It is also a part of the Second World War, the battlefield was in China. And the Japanese army occupied the northern part of China. Xiao Hong's hometown was also in that area. And two years later, in 1933, Xiao Hong started her writing journey. And from that time on, she became this active writer, focusing on the people's life under wartime, especially how the poor farmer's life and also the women's life were affected by these tragedy events. I would say that Xiao Hong's work is definitely a combination of her tragic experiences and also the observation of the war. I was able to find one of her books in English, and this is called the Field of Life and Death and Tales of Hulan River. As you can guess, this is a bind up book of our two novels. They are called The Field of Life and Death and also Tales of Hulan River. This is translated by Howard Goldblatt. These two novels described how people's life, especially how the poor farmer's life, became empty because of the lack of resources during wartime and also because of the uncertainty of their lives. And in the meantime, her books also pictured the ugliness of people. Du Xun, who is a very important writer in the history of Chinese literature, recommended Xiao Hong's book, saying that her books had the strong willing to live and also the struggles when coming to death. I think if you want to read more about the situation of China during the Republic of China period, or you have heard a lot about the Second World War in Western countries, but not quite familiar with the Eastern country situations, you could give this book a try. And Xiao Hong died in 1942, seven years before the People's Republic of China was founded. The second author I want to introduce here is probably the most famous Chinese female authors in the Western countries. She is Zhang Ailing, and she goes by Ailing Chang in English. Ailing Chang was born in 1920s in a Shanghai wealthy family. Although the living resources was rich for Ailing Chang when she was a child, she was always tortured by her stepmother. She went to a private middle school hosted by an American church in Shanghai in 1931, and she was encouraged to write by her school. And after that, in 1938, she left her father and stepmother and went to live with her birth mother. And during the Second World War, she studied on and off in Hong Kong and Shanghai, and eventually she stayed in Shanghai to be a writer for a living. 
And after the People's Republic of China was founded in 1950, she moved to Hong Kong to continue her study, and she moved to the U.S. in 1955 and eventually have the rest of her life in the U.S. She once said, life is a gorgeous gun but covered with lies. I think this sentence described her life philosophy very well. She had the opportunity to experience this luxury life, but she also know clearly that you need to compromise a lot of your things in order to get such a life. However, in her adult life, she kept this elegant living style, although she's no longer the daughter of a rich family. Same with Xiao Hong's books, Eileen Chang's books are also full of desolation. But different from Xiao Hong's style, her desolation is not coming from the lack of of living opportunities, but coming from her clear awareness of the human nature. Her books are often thoroughly express the cruel of life, especially the cruel in relationships. The character always was unwillingly pushed by the society, and sometimes they do things because they are giving to their destiny. You can actually find quite a few of her books in English, and some of her books are picked up and published by the Penguin Modern Classic series. If you sometimes worry about the quality of the English translation and you are thinking maybe something will lost during the translation process, I can guarantee that the English translation of Elin Chang's books are wonderful because she was very strict about the translation of her books and also sometimes she translated some of the books by herself. I have three of her books in English on hand. They are uh, half a lifelong romance and um, Love in a Fallen City, and also Last Caution. These are books written in different stages of her life, but they all set in the Shanghai during the Second World War. You may wonder wondering that another story from the Second World War are they the same setting with the Xiao Hong's books, and the answer is no, they are totally different. Xiao Hong's book was focusing on the northern part of China, and Alin Chang's book was focusing on the southern city of China and the battlefield involvement level and the economics and also the culture are totally different. If you are curious about how Ellen Chang can put her life philosophy into her books, I would recommend to pick up any of her books, but start with Have a Lifelong Romance or The Love in, Love in a Fallen City. The last writer I want to recommend today is called Yang Jiang. She's a very important scholar in the Chinese modern literature history. She was born in 1911, the same year when Xiao Hong was born, and she studied foreign languages until her graduate school, and after that she went overseas to Cambridge University and France to continue her study. She was an expert in Chinese, English, and French. At the age of 47, she decided one day to study Spanish and became the first person who translated Don Quixote from Spanish to Chinese. Compared to the other two writers I mentioned today, Yang Jiang had a wonderful childhood and also youth life. But during the Cultural Revolution, she was decentralized in 1970 to a small town called Xinyang in Henan province. During that time, she needed to do chores in daily life in order to get re-education. Although after about two years, she and her family were able to go back to Beijing and continue with their normal daily life, the experiences left a painful mark in her life permanently. After the Cultural Revolution, Yang Jiang's writing was focusing on the essays and also foreign language studies. During the 1990s, her husband and her daughter passed away, and she went into this deep sorrow and didn't pick up her pen until she was 92 years old. When she was 92 years old, she wrote a memoir about her family called The Three of Us. I couldn't find this book in English, but I hope maybe there will be a publisher can pick it up and translate it in the future because this is a wonderful book describing her life and her family's life. In her elderly life, Yang Jiang continued reading and writing every day, and she also encouraged young people to study and founded some scholarship using her family's name. Yang Jiang actually passed away only two years ago at the age of 105, and she donated all her books and manuscripts and other stuff to museums and related organizations. Most of Yang Jiang's books are essay collections. Reading about her essay is like listening to a philosopher talking about her pursuit of life, because you can always get the profound insight of the world. The book I want to recommend today is called Six Chapter of My Life, Down Under, translated by Jonathan D. Spence and Howard Goldblatt. 
who is also the translator of Xiao Hong's books. This is a memoir talking about her life when she was decentralized to the small town in Henan, and she was separated from her husband. But luckily, their houses are not far away from each other, so they can always get together to do things together. The book is a record of the chores and the idol and small things happen here and there, but you get the idea that these are all the tiny things happen in this big background. However, Yang Jiang decided to not to talk about the big picture, but focus on the little things that are influenced by the society. If you have heard about the Cultural Revolution in China, or maybe if you have a lot of political ideas about it, but you don't know how people's life was affected by this event, or if you just want to listen to the Chinese most important scholar sharing a little bit of her life to you, I highly recommend you to check out this book. And that's all the three writers I want to introduce today. I hope it's not too much information and you did enjoy their lifetime stories and also find some books that you are interested in. And again, I will make one Chinese literature videos per month, so in the meantime, Please enjoy my other videos, and most importantly, happy reading! See you next time! Bye!